Hi, it's Tim at Tiki Boom. In today's tutorial, we're gonna go over how to make this very cool distorted wavy 3D text effect in Illustrator. We're gonna learn a lot of techniques that you can apply to your designs. First step, let's go ahead and get our type and we're gonna grab it here and we're gonna go ahead and make sure it's center line. We're gonna center it to the canvas here. And then I'm gonna see if I'm gonna do any uh, little uh, kerning here. So maybe we'll bring this back just a little bit and bring this L over a little bit. All right, there we go. So we got that and we're gonna go ahead and outline the text. And so we got the text outlined. Now that we have our text outlined, I'm gonna go ahead and ungroup it. And then I'm gonna uh, zoom in just a couple pixels here. So we'll go there and we're gonna bring this um, text up here and we're gonna start manipulating the text. So we want to get to the little bottom portions here and we're gonna go ahead and go like this. And we're gonna make this go really far down. So that way when we do our distortion effect, um, it will be nice and pronounced. So we're gonna bring uh, the um, these little uh, bars here, we're gonna bring them down. So we gotta select these portions and we're just gonna bring these down just to kind of mimic the um, original optical properties. Now, we're gonna go ahead and tackle this O. So I'm gonna take a rectangle and I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that we get to pretty much the middle of the O. And I'm gonna go ahead and select both, do Shape Builder and just take uh, this bottom portion here. Then what we're gonna do is we're not going to make it perfectly aligned to the bottom because we need to account for overshoot. As you can tell here, there is just a little bit of overshoot and that's for the optical properties of a font. So we're gonna try to match that to the undershoot here. So we'll go ahead and select all of this, zoom in and it's pretty much the same there. So that's nice. We're gonna go ahead and take the pen tool and we're going to um, Go ahead and snap it to the points here and make sure we have that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and select this, Command F it in the front and go here. Now we have our edited text. We're gonna go ahead and go to the Shape Builder tool and we're gonna go ahead and unify this. Okay, our text is now ready for manipulation with the Distort tool. So let's go ahead and make sure this is center aligned. And we're gonna select everything. I'm just gonna do um, uh, the unclipping here and then go ahead and make it a compound path. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up here to this little warp tool and we're gonna double click on it. And as you can tell here, we have some global brush dimensions. So this is where you can have the size of the brush here. So you can have it be a square, you can have it be an oval, have it be whatever. Then we have the intensity. Um, I'm gonna actually set this to 30%. And what the intensity does is it's basically how intense the distortion is. So if you have more, it's gonna basically uh, drag things with it in a much more pronounced way. Um, and then we have detail and simplify. So simplify definitely helps with um, a lack of jaggedness when you drag stuff. And then detail is just how much detail is it's still gonna show within the original shape. So we're gonna click okay. And then as you can tell here, you have your brush. And if you want to, you can hold option and you can make the brush smaller, bigger. So I'm gonna go like that. And then now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select everything and then double click on that distort tool again. And ready for some magic, here we go. Yeah, isn't that fun? Look at that, that is very fun. And so let me actually do just a little bit bigger. And let's do it like right there. Yeah, there we go, that's cool. And so as you can tell here, this is why we wanted to kind of manipulate the text so that way we could have room for something very pronounced in this. So we're gonna go ahead and grab a copy of this, Command C and Command F it, and just throw it off to the side. That way we have a nice live copy. Now we're gonna select all of this and we're gonna go up to Effect and we're gonna do 3D Immaterials, 3D Classic Extrude and Bevel. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a custom rotation. So we're just gonna kind of maybe do this and maybe make it tilted just a touch. Maybe make it a little bit more. 
and we just kind of mess around here and I kind of am liking that and what I'm gonna do is like 300 um, and then I'm gonna actually tilt it up just a touch more and what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna rotate it and let's do this let's do that there we go you just kind of mess around until you get something that you like I'm kind of trying to do something kind of fun here and then you can kind of mess with the perspective so um, the perspective will make it much more pronounced um, so I think I want to do something like that and um, you have this all completed and we're going to click OK. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to object and then expand appearance and as you can tell here we have this expanded and I'm going to go ahead and ungroup it a bunch of times. I'm going to do command option seven, which releases any clipping mass. I just do it a bunch of times. Let's go ahead and now create some unified shapes for this 3D. The reason that we did the 3D extrude as well is that uh, basically it gives you a guide of different shapes that you can make if you want to do some custom lighting. So here's a technique that we're going to use to create as uh, least amount of shapes as possible. And then I'm going to time lapse the rest. So I'm going to go ahead and select everything. And then I'm going to come over here. I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to start on the H. And essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, make the front facing of the H with the shape builder tool. So shift M. And I'm basically going to just go ahead and shape build this. So this is uh, a little bit arduous in a sense, but it is so worth it because you then are able to create your own custom stuff. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do maybe like right there is going to be one shape and then maybe like right here is a shape and then this bottom one's a shape. And then this little bottom one right here is a shape and I have this be a shape and I'm going to do the in-betweens right here. So this is in between letters and let's go ahead and keep going here. You kind of have to be careful. It takes some hand-eye coordination, which is fun. And then I'll make maybe this a shape. And then I think I'll just do two for that. Okay. So you've created your little shapes here. You're going to see little kind of little things right here. Um, what we're going to do is after we unify everything and apply our swatches, we're going to go ahead and select all those and delete them. So you're going to take that H and we're going to go ahead and sample this swatch right here. Let's go ahead and zoom out actually. And then we're going to go ahead and just bring it all the way forward. And then we're going to go like right here. We're going to say this is going to be like maybe the pink. Um, or actually I'm going to do it as the blue and then we're going to do right here this little shape. We're going to make it the pink and then this one maybe we make it like the gold. And then we come here to this one and we're going to make it the pink. And then what I'm going to do is zoom in a little bit and I'm going to take this one and I'm going to actually make it. We're going to do this uh, little blue swatch here. And then I'm going to come to these little portions right here and this one at the bottom. And I'm going to select these blue ones right here. And let's go ahead and do, let's zoom in and let's select this one. We'll sample the blue as well. All right. And then let's go ahead and sample this one. So um, this one I'm going to make the blue. And then I'm going to go ahead and make the pink. Oops, I've got to get this sidebar one here. So we'll go like right here. And for this one, I'm going to make it the pink. And so basically now what you're going to do is you have your swatches set up. And let me actually bring this to the front. So you have your swatches set up. So now when you start unifying the other shapes, you can just sample them. Um, and as you go, so I'm going to go ahead and fast forward this and do the rest of this and uh, have fun.
there we go you made the shapes and you can go ahead and clean it up you can tell here there's just like little little things right here and that's actually really easy to clean up so you go ahead and select the shape go ahead and do the shape builder tool and you just kind of go like this and you just keep doing that until it's all cleaned up. So let's go ahead and select this. Let's go ahead and group it. And we're gonna center it. And I'm gonna center it just a little bit more here. And I'm going to make a rectangle. And we're gonna do the wonderful thing that we love doing and that's creating some grain. So I'm gonna go ahead and take out the stroke. And I'm gonna go over to the fill and we're gonna go to uh, make a gray gradient. And I'm gonna go ahead and do just um, slightly gray right here. So we double click this, let's make it just a little bit gray. And this one, we're gonna go ahead and make it just a little bit like that. And then we're gonna go ahead and press G and just kind of flip it. And we'll go like that there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go here to, um, we're gonna go to soft light. So we'll go here and we go to soft light. So you can see how that's sort of interacting here with the uh, colors and everything. So then we're gonna go and we're gonna go to effect. We're gonna go artistic and film grain. And I've already set this up so that way in the white, the um, highlight area is just um, a little bit less. Actually, I'm gonna do that a little bit more and then we'll, uh, less intensity, the less white, the more intensity, the more white. So let's say, let's go back right there and click OK and then voila. That's a wrap. I hope these techniques have inspired you to add some sauce to your designs. Don't forget to check out our Insta, at Tiki Boom Design. Uh, we do a lot of design experiments throughout the week around these tutorials. So follow us for added inspiration. And if you're new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe and get notified. We drop new content every Monday. As always, your friend in design, Tim at Tiki Boom. Bye.